Hey everybody, Karen here. Welcome back to Unpinned Creative and the next episode in our Creative Healing series. I have been offline for a few days, so I apologise that there's been a bit of a gap between videos. Um, I've just had a busy week with some other work to do, um, but hopefully I'll be back on track this week. Okay, today we're going to do the page in this art journal. So in the last episode we finished off this page and all I've done since that video is gone around the outside of this image with my black water soluble pencil and then I have added the word faith and to do that I just used a gold Posca pen and um, outlined it with a black fine line marker and that page is done and I'm really happy with it I love how it turned out so for this page um, I we're still working with the concept of faith which I discussed um, with you in the previous two videos um, this page is going to feel a little bit different but hopefully it explains even better I feel the idea I have in my head we'll see if it works out <laughs> the concept of faith to me so um, in the last episode we cut this little door because I wanted to be able to see this dedication and today we're, we're going to decorate the page so the first thing I'm going to do is cover the page in a layer of black Mod Podge black Mod Podge is just Mod Podge that I have added black acrylic paint too and the amount of black paint you add determines the how actually black the Mod Podge is um, so less black means it's more of a grey than a black I am going to add a wee bit more black paint to this because it's not quite black enough for me So it's literally just pouring in some black acrylic paint <laughs> to my Mod Podge. I use this um, when I want to seal a background and start with a dark background rather than a light background. Now if you're worried about um, ink or whatever medium you're using transferring to the other pages in the book, just pop a piece of paper between the uh, underneath the pages you're working on. I'm not worried about that. I like how the book evolves, um, you know, when mediums transfer to the other pages and stuff like that, but I understand that that's not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> All right, that's a little bit darker. So easy peasy. I'm just going to put a light layer over the top of both of these pages. Um, it will also take care of the white edges that you can see on the on the edge of the door, which I'm not so keen on. So I hope everyone is doing well out there. I am good. I am good. Just trucking along. I always seem to have way too much to do and never enough time. And you'd think, now that my youngest has started Polytech, so he's had his first full week at Polytech now and it's going so well. A million times better than I ever could have imagined it would go um, which I'm so grateful for you'd think I'd have all this time on my hands but <laughs> so far not I'm just trying to get into the routine of you know how to rearrange my days and fit in all the stuff that I like to do which is mostly crafting okay so I have covered up the 
title of the book and the authors, which was which I specifically was keeping. So all I'm going to do is dab over the top with the paper towel, just to bring some of that back. I don't mind if it's a little bit hidden, but I'd still like to be able to read it a bit, even if I have to look hard for it. <laughs> so that's a bit better. All right, and then on the inside, so I need to let that dry, obviously. On the inside for this dedication, I don't want that covered up because I like a lot what it says. So what I'm going to do is, I had, ah, here it is. I have some washi tape, and I actually got this um, from an op shop, and they gave it to me free because I was buying quite a bit of stuff and there was no price on this, so they just chucked it in, which I was very grateful for. And I'm just going to pop a piece of washi over the top of that, like so, and then I'm going to put some Mod Podge on there as well. Do I want to cover this? Maybe just a bit at the top. Just a wee bit like that. Okay, I'm not going to let that door close. Um, but I'm going to go put, pop this aside now and let that dry a bit and while that's drying we're going to colour up some texture paste so if you saw my last video not the creative healing video but the last video I posted on my channel um, I may, showed you how to make the texture paste that I use and also the clear gesso that I use and I have um, the texture paste that I was using is coming to the end of its lifespan. I've had this jar of texture paste, I probably made it at least two years ago, and I'm right at the end of it now, and it's um, getting a little bit firmer, and um, there's only a little bit left. So what I want to do is make some black texture paste. Now I'm picking that this is actually going to come out more dark grey or more grey because of the white um, of the texture paste. So we'll see. So I'm just pouring some more acrylic paint in. This is obviously just cheap acrylic paint I got from the op shop, <laughs> as everything I do. And because this is quite firm, this texture paste, it should loosen up a bit with that liquidy paint. And I'm using a chopstick <laughs> as a stirrer because you need something quite firm um, with your texture paste otherwise it breaks. Because I was using a um, skewer but I just kept breaking them so I have found a chopstick that we don't use. We use chopsticks all the time but I have, and I have lots of them but this is one that's quite big and thick and perfect for stirring and we don't generally use this one. Right, so that's nice and grey. I'm going to keep adding black until it gets a bit darker. I want it quite dark. So I think I've done all the talking I um, wanted to do about faith and the concept of faith. Um, so this video is mostly just going to be about creating the page that depicts that concept to me in, in a style that I really like, which is the dark kind of space. Okay, so you can see that's quite dark grey now, but still very grey. And I and it's also loosened up heaps, so it's um, much runnier now, which I am 100% okay with because I want it to spread nicely on the page. Um, right, let me dry this off really quickly with my heat gun and make sure this door is not sticking. See, technically, it is sticking. Technically, you should wait, do one layer, dry it, 
and then do the next layer but you know I have no patience for dry time okay I'm gonna go dry that off with my heat gun and I'll be back okay that is dry enough now because my podge leaves a kind of shiny slick you can't really see it even though it's matte mod podge coating um, and I don't want that for this page I'm now going to cover it in just a thin layer of clear gesso so that's my homemade clear gesso and I'm just going to take a wee bit of black mod podge on my finger and just um, cover up those white patches that appeared when the page pages stuck together I'm not too worried about them but I don't really want them that bright white just like that So just a thin layer of clear gesso, which will take any shine away and give the page a bit of grit. I'm going to dry that off before I do the inside. <laughs> All right. That is nice and dry and you probably can't see the difference but it is definitely much more matte now and um, I did the inside as well at the same time which I have managed to stick down there we go <laughs> stick down that flat okay so when I'm doing a page like this in a, a book like this which is an art journal I don't worry about um, stuff like this happening or for example there's a, a um, hair from the paintbrush in the Mod Podge there um, I don't worry about stuff like that because it all adds to the texture of the page and also you can see the backs of the um, brads that I put on the background uh, on this page you can see those the outline of those there I'm not worried about it if you are just put an extra page on top of this page so that you can't see them but for me it all adds to the detail on the page so I'm not fussed about it alrighty the next thing I'm going to do is bring in our texture paste that I have colored now what I'm going to do is take a scraper now this is just a cake decorating scraper I just got it from a cheap shop the two dollar shop or something like that um, dollar store I think you call them over there in, in the US um, but you can use a plastic any plastic card like an old credit card or gift card or something like that will work now I just need to figure out how I'm going to get it out of the jar and onto my scraper because my scraper won't fit all the way to the bottom I don't think so maybe that will be fine and then what I'm going to do I think is because this is still quite grey I'm going to add a wee bit of black paint on top like so pop that over there and then I'm just going to scrape that down the page so you can see I've got a little bit of white coming through from texture paste that was really hard and hadn't um, mixed into the paint I've got the grey of the texture paste that I colored with the black and then I've got the black of the acrylic paint coming through as well 
Oh, and I've got some green. <laughs> Even better. Which was probably already on the um, scraper. I'm covering up that text again, which I'm okay with now. might just pop a little something in there so that door doesn't shut and get stuck so that's just a piece of card if I push it in there it should hold the door up okay so this is what we have now which I'm pretty happy with I'm just deciding if I want to add more. Maybe a wee bit. Less is more, less is more, unless your name is Karen. <laughs> and then more is more. To this Karen anyway. Right, I'm going to dry that off and then I might do a little bit on the inside. Okay, something else I just want to show you quickly while I'm drying that off. When you're using your heat gun, when I use my heat gun, I constantly am moving it because I don't want it stopped in one place because these are really, really hot. If you don't have a heat gun, use a hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, I have dried stuff in the oven before. Or if it's a hot sunny day, just pop it outside in the sun. And this stuff really doesn't take too long to dry. Um, but one thing that I have discovered over the years of doing art journaling and stuff is if you Mod Podge first or PVA, use PVA, um, and you hold your heat gun in place, then you can get a really cool texture effect on the surface. So can you see down here? It kind of looks like a moon surface. So all you do, I'm going to do it, but I'll turn the sound off so you don't have the um, sound of the heat gun and show you how it happens. So you can see there that it has bubbled up. Now those bubbles do usually go back down again and they, if you push on them they'll go back down. But um, And where you don't have so much of a thick layer of glue it just stays flat. Um, but I really really love that um, effect and um, <clears throat> I think it's so cool. So I'm going to do that a wee bit more over this page just to add some more texture. And it happens fairly quickly. So if it's if you're not getting that bubbling effect, don't hold your heat gun there too long because you will burn the paper. And the other thing is it probably does take away from the integrity of any glue that you have put to glue pages together and stuff like that. So just be aware of that um, and what you're using that technique on. Right, I'm going to add a little bit to the inside of this door now. Just a tiny bit, I think. Be 
because I do want the door to shut. Okay, and I'm going to dry that off. Make sure you wipe off your tools when you're finished using texture paste because it will stay on there forever and ruin things you don't want texture paste on. <laughs> Alright, so we have some really cool texture on that page now. Very, very cool. And under here. So now I just have to figure out what next. I think I'll take off this washi tape now. Washi tape is great for stuff like that because it's easy to um, peel up and it doesn't tend to rip, rip the page. I'll probably keep that piece and use it somewhere else. But that looks cool. I'm very happy with that. Okay, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do on the rest of this page, but I do know what I'm going to do on the inside. So this morning I have cut out or punched out using um, this little punch that I picked up at the op shop some little flowers and I punched them out of an aluminium can so a coca-cola can you can see um, and I'm going to be doing a video, hopefully it'll be the video that I post after this one in the next few days, about five different ways to use an aluminium can in your crafting. And so I'll show you exactly on camera how I did this and how I, um, how I disassembled the can. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Anyway, the point is I have cut out a whole lot of these little um, flowers out of the aluminium can and my idea is that these are going to go on the inside of this door. And this is going to be what represents faith on this page. So... that one down there because that one has a petal missing so I'm going to pop it right on the edge of the door so here's the concept dark scary you know feels gross faith promises us that a new door will open and there will be something beautiful waiting. Um, yep, and I, I love that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> like, I don't even feel like I need to write the word faith on here anywhere for me to know exactly what this page is about when I, in years to come, come back and look at it. Alright, so how am I going to attach the flowers? Well... 
I had an idea, I could glue them, of course, easy peasy, but I think I'm actually going to stitch them on. So what I'm going to do is use my pokey tool, my awl, and I'm going to make two little holes in each of the flowers where I want them to go. Now, if you don't want to put holes throughout your book, pop a um, cutting mat underneath or a thick piece of cardboard. I'm just going to not worry about it. So I'm just making two little holes as if these were a button and I'm going to stitch them on as if they were a button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back when I finish punching the holes to show you how I'm going to stitch them on. Alrighty. So I have pinched all the holes and I have a small needle threaded with black thread that I have doubled over but I haven't bothered knotting the end of it. And then what I'm going to do is push my needle through from the back, up through one hole and down through the next. Just one time because I think that will be enough to hold these flowers in place. And on the back I'm just going to tie a knot. Like so, and another one for good luck. And there we have our flower attached to the page. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for all of the flowers going up from the back. Oh, actually, I'll show you how I knot off. So that's the first one. I'm not going to cut the thread. I'm going to go up through the next hole where the next flower is going, pop the flower on, I've mixed up all my flowers now but it doesn't matter, Like so. Make sure my thread is pulled through nicely. Now you could just go on to the next one, but I'm actually going to tie a knot um, that's just, I'm going to cut this tail off. I'm going to tie a knot after each one um, just to secure them properly. Now. Um, I'm going to, to do that, I'm going to slide my needle under this thread that is going from where the first flower was to the second flower. Slide it under there. And put, put the needle through the loop that that creates. And then pull it tight and do it one more time. Then I'm not going to worry about snipping my thread. I'm just going to go up to the next flower and carry on until all the flowers are stitched on. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'm going to do that and then um, come back and show you what it looks like.
There we go, and I had just exactly enough thread to get all those stitched on there. So that was probably a combination of good luck and experience. <laughs> Now the reason I tie off after each flower is in case your um, thread breaks halfway through you don't need to then go back and start from the beginning you can just go back from the one where your thread broke. If you didn't tie off between each flower and your thread broke here after you'd already so in these on, you might have to undo some of them until you got enough thread to tie a knot and secure it properly. Um, yeah, that's just uh, that's just what I do when I'm sewing on buttons and stuff like that. Okay, so there are the flowers all stitched on. Now we need to figure out. I'm going to put my needle away before I lose it. Which I often do. I would like a way to keep this door closed and also a um, handle of some sort. So I think we'll do that next. I will just figure out how I'm going to do that. Alright, what I'm going to do is I have a piece of aluminium can left over. And I'm going to cut a rectangle shape out of it with my scissors. Now, I will explain all of this when I do the video about using aluminium cans. But, just please be aware that they, the edges are sharp. And you need to be very careful. Danger is my middle name. So, <laughs> so I tend to do things that are... Or might be considered dangerous anyway what I'm going to do I've done that wrong what I'm going to do is cut out a rectangle like this and then I'm going to fold it I'm just going to push out that fold I just made because I don't want to I don't want that not quite in the middle like so I'm going to use my bone folder to push down that crease and then I'm going to fold this edge over top like that push that down with my bone folder So now I have a nice strong piece of metal and the edges are covered. All right, it's not the shape I want it to be. So I'm going to trim off the end because it's bigger than I want. That's good. And then I'm going to try and round the corners if it if I've made it big enough that I can get it in here. Just be aware that little bits of aluminium go flying, so point it away from you. Hello, darling. Hey, eh? you ripped your pants. Okay, so I have nice rounded corners now, which is good, that's what I want. Now, I don't want it to be silver though, I want it to be black. So I'm, I've got some alcohol ink here, and you only need the tiniest little, tiniest, that's probably even too much, little drop. And I'm just going to use my finger tool. But you don't have to. You can use a sponge or a paintbrush or something like that. And I'm just going to move that ink around on top. Of that tag. Well, I might need a bit more actually. There 
it does get quite sticky so it will start coming off again onto your finger and yes you'll get your fingerprints in it but I like the texture that gives me And now I'm going to dry it. It takes a wee while to dry, so I'm going to dry it off with my heat gun. Do not hold it with your finger. Use a tool of some sort to hold it because the aluminium can it will get really, really hot with the heat gun. And um, so you want to dry it. If you want to dry it off, just let it, let it dry for a few minutes if you can be patient. And if you can't and you use a heat gun, use something to hold it down so it doesn't fly all over the place. And then leave it for a minute or two before you actually touch it because the can will stay hot for a wee minute afterwards. Okay. There we go. I now have a piece of black aluminium and that is going to be my closure for this door. So what I'm going to do is the other day um, at the op shop, I was really lucky to find some brads. And they're heart-shaped, kind of bronzy, a dark, or not even, yeah, maybe bronze coloured brad. Just tiny little ones. In New Zealand, you hardly, or in Tauranga, where I am, I hardly ever am lucky enough to find actual craft supplies that I want to use. So I was so stoked to find these. And that's going to be perfect for making the, this closure. So what I'm going to do is use the 1 8 of an inch hole punch in my crocodile. That's the smallest one. And punch a wee hole in one end of that tag I've just made. And then I'm going to pop that down where I want it on the page. I think that will be cool. Make a little mark through that hole on the page. And then see if I can make punch a hole in the same spot. Just like that easy peasy and then I'm going to take my tag pop the bread through it oh that hole was almost too big pop it through the hole in my page and open up the back make sure the heart is up the right way and then what we have is a little swing thingy hopefully <laughs> hopefully it'll swing I might have done it a bit tight Keep our door shut. There we go. Pretty cool. I'm happy with that. But I still want a um um but I still want a do I? I maybe still want a little handle on that door. Okay, this video is already quite long, so I think I'll leave it there. And also I need time to think about how I'm going to finish off this page. Um, but you see the concept now of faith, hopefully. Hopefully it, um, you understand the concept I'm going for. And um, 
yep that was lots of fun this is this is really um my sort of crafting my sort of style very grungy and and dark and but with some with some hope and faith <laughs> So thanks so much for joining me again today and I'm sorry it's been such a long time since the last one. I will try and get them out a bit more regularly again. Um, I'll see you in the next one.